The fundamental building blocks of a quantum computer are quantum bits, or qubits. And some of the most common examples of qubits are based on the different energy states of single electrons, like the electrons in an atom. Here the energy levels of those electrons encode the two states of the quantum bit. We succeeded in creating a new type of qubit by trapping a single electron to the mirror image of itself as seen through a crystal of solid neon. I know that sounds crazy, so let me explain. The neon is a noble gas famous for the light that it emits when its own electrons are excited by an electric charge, but at low temperature it solidifies into a solid crystal. When we put an electron near the surface, its negative charge repels the neon's electrons at the surface, leaving behind a positive charge. This creates a positive image charge on the other side of the surface, a mirror image of the electron. Because opposite charges attract, the electron is attracted to the neon mirror. But as it gets close, something really interesting happens. It turns out that all the orbitals for the electrons to reside on the atoms of neon are filled, and there's no more room. The electron can't get any closer to the surface. It ends up trapped just a few nanometers from the mirror. We actually grow the crystal of neon on top of a chip with microscopic electrodes, and we can apply voltages to these electrodes to push the electrons around. This method is closely related to an idea that's over two decades old, that is to trap single electrons on the surface of helium. It turns out that this is even harder to do, partly because helium is still a liquid at low temperatures. In fact, it is a superfluid, an extra slippery type of fluid. The sloshing around of the surface seems to make the trapping harder to do. Now that we've trapped the electron, how do we make it to a qubit? We need to be able to control the qubit and then to measure it at some later time. This is the hard part, and our colleagues have been working on this for years, designing a way to control the electron without destroying its quantum state. Part of the chip we use is a very small electrical tuning fork. Using this tuning fork, we can send in a pulse of energy to excite the vibrations of the electron. Here's what's cool. The electron's motion can resonate with the tuning fork so that its quantum state gets transferred to the tuning fork and then back again. If the excitation can bounce back and forth more than a couple of times, we say the system is in the regime of strong coupling. And that was an important first step that we realized experimentally. Now, of course, we didn't stop there. Having strong coupling allows us to control the qubit and to measure it at some later time. Now, the vibrational energy levels of the electron actually correspond to the quantum states of the qubit. If we excite the electron out of its ground state, it ends up decaying back after some time. Then we have to excite it again. This time it takes to decay is the quantum lifetime of the qubit, an important measure of how good the qubit is. We found that the quantum lifetime of the qubit was already better than other qubits based on single electron's motion. At the moment, the qubit we have is what we call a charged qubit, based on the motion of the electron. But one exciting future prospect will be to convert this into a spin qubit relating to the spin of the electron. This should make the qubit much less sensitive to its environment, increasing the quantum lifetime by orders of magnitude. With this, the single electron trapped to a mirror of neon might well become the most important building block of a future quantum computer.